find better offertory music than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Loomis Indira is working. Let me tell you, she's going to, this one's going to pass the torch to that one over there someday. Mary Jane's going to give us a joke in her story. Grind them up, you come up with 
carob, which is a real good substitute for chocolate. Now, I wonder, does that mean that John the Baptist was eating chocolate and honey? Well, I don't know. Anyway, we'll find out later, I guess. Anyway, this thing about the difference between locusts and grasshoppers is it's said that the difference is that locusts have an anger issue with a mob mentality. That's one of your differences, okay? So anyway, my story today is about a great locust swarm. It happened back in the 1870s, and it was actually one of the largest, most widespread natural disasters that hit the Great Plains. It had been very hot and very dry, so when the locusts hatched out, they had to form swarms to look for food. Now, it had been very dry, and when the homesteaders saw that there was a cloud off in the distance. They got excited because they thought that it might mean rain. But as the cloud got closer, they found out that it looked kind of different. It, it, it was sort of green looking. And when the sun hit, hit it, it kind of was iridescent. It comes from the, their, their wings. It's iridescent. Like. So this, this cloud was so big and so full of locusts, it actually blotted out the sun. And then when the, the locusts fell to earth, that's when the real destruction began. They covered the ground and they started eating anything they could get. First to go was vegetation, like crops, grass, grain, trees, plants of all kinds of things. And Actually, in a few hours, they could strip the whole area of everything plant life. Then they started attacking cloth. You see, the, the uh, homesteaders would take their quilts and put them over their vegetable gardens, trying to protect their vegetables from this bunch of insects. But the locusts just ate their quilts up. They even ate the wool off of live sheep. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, they ate uh, clothes off of people's back. They ate the leather on the horses' harnesses. They ate the fence post. They ate the, the wooden doorknobs. Anything they could find to eat. And when they were all done, they just moved on to another place. Now, the swarm started in the eastern Rocky Mountain area, and then it spread to Iowa and the Mississippi River. And then it came from Texas, and it spread all the way up to the Canadian prairie crosses. Some of the worst areas hit was Montana, um, Iowa, the Dakotas, Michigan, they just came in and they ate all their, their corn, their barley, their wheat, just destroyed it all. Now these particular bunch of locusts are called Rocky Mountain locusts. Now that's important because they're commonly found in Montana and Colorado. And normally they're not a big problem, but because of that drought, they became a big problem because they had to find food and they just found migratory swarming to get it. Now this was devastating to the people of the Great Plains. Uh, so about one third of the people actually went back east or pressed further west, but some people were so poor that they just had to stay put. Every able-bodied man was asked to spend two days a week 
fighting the locusts and getting rid of their eggs. Now they did everything they could to get rid of these locusts. They, uh, whole families would go out with their brooms and their shovels and they beat on them. They dragged ropes through the field to try to capture them. They dug ditches hoping they couldn't get across them. That didn't work. Then they filled the ditches up with coal, coal oil and set them on fire hoping that they wouldn't like the smoke and they'd leave. Didn't work. Um, each year, more eggs were laid and more grasshoppers or locusts hatched. Well, the county and the government, they sent seeds to replant the area. They even sent grain to help feed the work animals because the horses had to have food too, didn't they? Anyway, this one governor had been elected in 1876 and his name was John Pillsbury. And the most important thing he did was he called for a national day of prayer. So on April 26 of 1877, everybody got down on their knees and prayed for help from God to get rid of the locusts. Amazing, right? And you know what happened? When those female grasshoppers would lay their eggs, they tried to lay them down as deep as they could in the ground. And when those eggs would hatch, that little nymph, they called it, or little baby, would crawl up to the surface. But after that day of prayer, an unusual late season snowstorm hit and froze that baby nymphs and killed them. And grasshoppers left never to return. Now when I say never return, <laughs> scientists tell you that they became extinct. There was no more Rocky Mountain locusts anymore. Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14 reads, I may stop the sky from sending rain, I may command the locusts to destroy the land, I may send sickness to my people. Then, if my people who are called by my name are sorry, for what they did, and if they pray and they obey me and stop their evil ways, I will hear from them from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. Imagine that. Again, the answer is found in our Bible. People tried everything to get rid of the locusts, and all else failed. They prayed, and God answered their prayer with freezing snow, just at the right stage of that <coughs> nymph development. Now, scientists may be mystified as to why they became extinct, but I'm not. Are you? No. We serve an awesome God. And I know that prayers are answered when the people of God cry out for help. Amen. Let's have a prayer. Lord, we thank you that you listen to our prayers. And Lord, may we remember to pray 
and to communicate with you and thank you for what you've done for us and thank you for hearing us when we need your help. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.